Clive Palmer, all right? He's rebuilding the Titanic and resurrected a dinosaur. And now he wants to do both to the United Australia Party. <laughs> Unlike the Titanic and the dinosaur, neither of which, it must be said, ended well, the United Australia Party was quite successful, boasting three Prime Ministers in its ranks. Lyons, Menzies and Billy Hughes. Not that Clive's running for office to be Prime Minister. The reason I'm standing for Federal Parliament is I'm standing to be the next Prime Minister of Australia. Oh, I beg your pardon, I'm beg your pardon. <laughs> he is doing it to be Prime Minister. But I'm not doing it to be Prime Minister. <laughs> Still, he's a man who knows his own mind. At least, at least to say hello to. And, and he knows what's what. Here's an extract from his interview with Late Line on Anzac Day. Well, I, I guess it's not really Anzac Day. Right. In another part of the interview, though, he explained how he'd deal with any conflict of interest that might arise because he's a mining magnet. If any matter came up uh, before any government thing that I was involved in, there'd be a conflict of interest, I'd leave the room and wouldn't vote on it. Any government thing? <laughs> any government thing that he's involved in? That covers a lot of ground, but then so does Clive. <laughs> Mind you, when I hear the expression government thing, I, I instantly think of Bill Heffernan. It's probably the <laughs> But Clive has tapped into the zeitgeist. He knows that... Now's the time for Australia to claim back itself. Presumably as a tax deduction. <laughs> anyway, one of Clive's policies is to reward regions that generate wealth with more government spending. For regions creating a certain amount of wealth, they can be sure that that will flow back into their community. Now, the most productive regions in the country are the mining communities, so presumably Clive's plan is to build roads, schools, hospitals, libraries in mineral-rich areas like the Pilbara. Mind you, because he's in mining himself, there is a conflict of interest, so he can't vote for it. So <laughs> he's effectively come up with a policy that his other policy prevents him from implementing. So it should save a lot of money. But easily, <laughs> easily his best policy is the one on immigration. We think it's crazy that people that haven't got a visa can't board a plane for $800 come to our airports in Melbourne and if they're not legitimate uh, immigrants, be sent straight back on the next plane. He's right, it's crazy. So <laughs> why not move a process which can take up to five years on Christmas Island to already existing queues at the passport counter at Tullamarine? <laughs> but don't underestimate this man. After all... He's been named a national living treasure. Why? I'm not sure. I mean... <laughs> I mean, yes, he's made a living from digging up our national treasure. <laughs> Still, I think the best joke about Clive's announcement comes from uh, Julie Bishop of Canberra. It'd be interesting to see if he launches his campaign on his new Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. But she's no Christopher Pine, is she? This is a Konski, not a Gonski. <laughs> He cracks me up, that guy. Well, a final word, if I may, about Clive Palmer. In fact, some final words. And not so much about Clive Palmer as from Clive Palmer. Clive has a uh, very interesting relationship with the English language. Obviously, they are not on speaking terms. We shouldn't be too detached to, to property. Mm. Yes, we shouldn't be too detached to property. Now, Clive has used the word detached to mean attached. And uh, it takes a very brave man to use a word in completely the opposite way to its dictionary <laughs> definition. I admire that. But I admire even more a man who uses a word that doesn't even exist. That's what happens for corporate directors. A corpony director. Now, presumably, uh, that is the director of a corpony. This is where Clive, in my view, becomes a poet, merging corporation and company, as corporation companies often do in real life, to create a completely new word. But if I've doffed my hat to Clive already, I have to remove my trousers and underpants for this... <laughs> This description of what politicians say and how journalists report it. The storings get boring and boring every day, said Alice. <laughs> the storings get boring and boring every day. Storings are stories, I guess, that are already boring, and these, according to Clive, are getting even more boring. 